And before I start, <clears throat> I wanted to give you an update of what I had received just recently today about the situation with Bhakti Cheru Maharaj. And it's not very good. So this is what is coming to everyone. And this is t June 29th, 10 a.m. U.S. Eastern Daylight Savings Time, which is... That was about four o'clock in the afternoon, <clears throat> our time. <clears throat> Dear devotees, Maharaj has become critically unwell. He has suffered a heart attack in the last few hours, and this is affecting all his organs and bodily functions. At this time, the doctors are working full time to stabilize Maharaj. The coming hours are the most critical. Maharaj has been and we will be giving the coming hours are most critical. Maharaj has been and we will be giving updates as soon as we can. At this time we are asking for full attention, prayers and focus on the well-being of his holiness bhakti Charu Maharaj. We humbly request for massive worldwide prayers to Lord Nishringadev at this time, signed your aspiring servants, His Holiness Bhakti Charu Swami Health Care Team. So, the situation is getting worse. So, even though he had corona, he had a heart attack too, just recently. So, that's complicated everything. So, of course, we want. The idea is that what can we do? We can pray, we can offer our sincere prayers, our feelings, and of course, as much as we can organize. They're doing it in many places around the world. They're having 24-hour kirtans. But here we can do whatever the leaders want to do here. It would be, in any way, it would, in some way, it would be helpful the more devotees get involved, the more the spiritual energy increases, the more mercy. And especially it's mentioned to be prayed to Lord Nishringadev, because Lord Nishringadev is specially endowed with a special, what we say, position to cure devotees. He does it all the time. So... Uh, it's not looking very good. So from the material point of view, but from the spiritual point of view, anything is possible. So, but it, it'll take the support of the devotees. Prabhupada also wanted to make a point to show that the more devotees who sh actively participate in these programs to help cure the devotees, the more it, it shows that the devotees care. You know, We do care especially for those persons who have dedicated everything, including their whole life, for the spreading of Krishna consciousness and who have inspired, I mean, in case of Bhakti True Maharaj, he's inspired tens and thousands of people to take up Krishna consciousness. Uh, he's an innovator in presenting Krishna consciousness around the world. He's He did a movie on the life of Srila Prabhupada that was very well received many years ago. He's established a major project in Ujjain, India, which has a full-fledged, high-operation Ayurvedic clinic, uh, a temple with huge deities, hundreds of devotees, uh, and of course, Maharaj has so many other accomplishments too. His classes on Krishna consciousness as he inspires devotees around the world. He's been practically one of the most traveled devotees. He travels a lot. And he's traveling back and forth across oceans just to spread Krishna consciousness. So in this particular situation, it uh, doesn't look good. We want Maharaj to stay with us. He has so much to offer. 
And we can imagine if he departs how much devastation it will cause in the hearts of the devotees. It will shock, it'll shock the entire ISKCON if he leaves because he's such a powerful personality in our, in our, uh, in our ISKCON society. So um, whatever you can do, you can write individual prayers, you can have small kirtans with small groups. And if the leaders here want to organize a regular kirtan, that would also be wonderful and very much uh, accepted. And so, uh, but um, ultimately everything is up to Krishna, it's up to Lord Nishringadev. But we have to show the Lord that we care. This is what the important part is. Because where Maharaj stays or he leaves, for him it doesn't matter. If he stays, he stays and does more service. If he leaves, he goes back to the spiritual world with Krishna. For him, it's not a problem either way. But for us, it's a problem. <laughs> and to show that we care, we really want his association, we really want his what he can offer in Krishna consciousness, so we do that. I know there's not too many devotees who have been associated with Bhakti Tru Maharaj in this area of the world. He doesn't come to this area so much. We do have one, Kirtita Radhika, she is also one disciple of Maharaj in this area. And uh, of course he has the disciples mostly in India, America, and in London, this was the majority of his disciples, but he preaches everywhere. And he's, uh, so, as I mentioned, for him, for a pure devotee, whether they stay or leave, it doesn't really matter. They want to stay because they want to put, stay and do more service for Prabhupada's mission. That's the only reason why they want to stay. Otherwise, if they don't stay, they go back to Godhead automatically. So, for a great soul, great soul, living or dying is the same. But for us, <laughs> who are, you know, dependent on such association and inspiration to keep our Krishna consciousness going around the world, and particularly for those who have become disciples or followers. Um, it's uh, it's a loss if we he does leave a big loss really. <laughs> so Krishna likes to see how much the devotees want him to be here, and that we have to show that by our own efforts, by offering prayers, having kirtans, writing letters, doing something practical, spiritual, to uh, you know show that we care. We do care because, you know, such great personalities are very rare. And you don't find personalities like that. They don't come so easily. And when they, we did, when they do come in our association, it's a great, great fortune. And then when they leave our association, it's a great misfortune for us. <laughs> And Maharaj, on a personal level, maybe you don't know him, but he's very loving. He's as, he's just as personal as you can get. He's so personal. He talks to each and every devotee as a, as a friend. He's very, he's very uh, friendly. He's very open. He's very uh, concerned about devotees. Uh, when he sees his god brothers, he immediately runs up to them and gives them a big hug. <laughs> Every time I see Maharaj, I get a hug. <laughs> so this is Maharaj. He's very affectionate also. Uh, so a person like that is quite, quite rare. So, um, and Maharaj is 74 years old. So... Being of that age, it means that health is always less, and it's, you can never really revive your health at that age, but you can keep it going, so you can continue on for a few more years. In 1967, Srila Prabhupada had his third heart attack, and he said that this was the time I was supposed to go. 
But I prayed to Krishna, my mission has not even started. Please give me more time. In 1977, Prabhupada said, Krishna gave me 10 more years. So Krishna, with the prayers of the devotees and the concern of the devotees, the love of the devotees, that extended Prabhupada's life for 10 more years. And so in the same way, we want Bhakti Thirumar to stick around for a while because he has so much to give to the devotees and so much to inspire. <clears throat> Those of you who are not familiar, you can go on his website and there's, there's we may say, hundreds and hundreds and thousands of lectures given by Maharaj in different places around the world. Mm -hmm. So um, I just wanted to impart that so we can get a little bit of a because Iskan is like a family. That's the way Prabhupada set it up. And he says, you know, there's the grandfather, there's the father, then there's the uncles, and then there's the children and the nephews, and the nephews of the nephews, and the sons of the sons, and the daughters of the daughters. And Prabhupada said it's a family. And we treat each other in that way because we understand it. Krishna is the Supreme Father and the spiritual master of Srila Prabhupada is the representative. He is the he is our grandfather. Prabhupada is our grandfather. For some he's our father, for some he's our grandfather. For those who've taken disciple initiation from his disciples, he's our grandfather. We have our fathers, which is our spiritual master, then we have his god brothers who are our uncles and aunts, like that. So it's a big family. And Prabhupada said, there'll be an ISKCON in the spiritual world. <laughs> As the devotees go back to Godhead, we'll formulate our family again in the spiritual world. And we'll see each other who, for what we are. We won't see each other according to the particular body that we have now. We'll see each other as who we are, pure spirit soul. But we'll remember who we were in this life, in this world, too. We'll think, oh, well, there is, uh, there is, uh, let me say, there is Lalit Govinda. There he is. Wow. Now I can see him in his pure spiritual body. I remember Lalit. Yeah. He used to give ice cream when I was in Slovenia. <laughs> so we'll be in the spiritual world talking about Lalit Govinda's ice cream. <laughs> so... This is how uh, uh, we'll remember everything we do in this world. Of course, we won't want to remember it a lot because it's not, it's not something that is so memorable. <laughs> but this is, this, is the, this is the mood of ISKCON. It's one huge family. And therefore, when one of the family members is in trouble, all the family becomes concerned, <laughs> like that. Okay, so uh, with that much said, we'll get on to the class. This is from Bhagavad Gita, chapter 7, verse number 18. And uh, we'll go right into the class. I'll just... Chant Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Udara sarva evaite Jani twa maiva me matam Astita sahi yuktatma Mam eva nutamam gatim Udara sarva evaite Jani natva maiva me matam 
Astita Sahi Yuktatma Mameva Nuta Mam Gatim Udara Sarva Evaite Jani Twatmaiva Me Matam Astita Sahi Yuktatma Mam eva nuta mam gatim. Udara, magnanimous, sarve, all, eva, certainly, ete, these, jani, one who is in knowledge, two, but, atma eva, just like myself, may, my, Matam, opinion, astita, situated, sa, he, he, certainly, yukta atma, engaged in devotional service, mum, in me, eva, certainly, anuttamam, the highest, gatim, destination. Hmm. Krishna is speaking, all these devotees are undoubtedly magnanimous souls, but he who is situated in knowledge of me I consider to be just like my own self. Being engaged in transcendental service, he is sure to attain me, the highest and most perfect goal. Srila hmm. Prabhupada's purport. It is not that devotees who are less complete in knowledge are not dear to the Lord. The Lord says that all are magnanimous because anyone who comes to the Lord for any purpose is called a Mahatma, or great soul. The devotees who want some benefit out of devotional service are accepted by the Lord because there is an exchange of affection. Out of affection they ask the Lord for some material benefit and when they get it, they become so satisfied that they also advance in devotional service. But the devotee in full knowledge is considered to be very dear to the Lord because his only purpose is to serve the Supreme Lord with love and devotion. Such a devotee cannot live a second without contacting or serving the Supreme Lord. Similarly, the Supreme Lord is very fond of his devotee and cannot be separated from him. In the Srimad Bhagavatam 9, 4, 68, the Lord says, Sadhava ridayam mayam sadunam ridayam tvaham manate te na jananti naham te managapi. The devotees are always in my heart, and I'm always in the hearts of the devotees. The devotees does not know anything beyond me, and I also cannot forget the devotee. This is a very intimate relation between me and the pure devotees. 
pure devotees and full knowledge are never out of spiritual touch, and therefore they are very much dearer to me. Hmm. Om Gyan Timiranda Sya Gyana Jana Salakaya Chaksu Un Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guravena Maha Shri Chaitanya Manobi Stam Stapti Tam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Gidam Mayam Dadanti Swam Padanti Kam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Shri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamane Namaste Saraswati Dev Hai Gaudamani Pacharine Nivashi Shashunyavari Pasyatyare Satarine Sri Krishna Chaitana Vrunatana Nathya Dvaita Gadadhar Sivasari Ghor Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Vanchakopa Tarugascha Viva Sindhu Veva Chapatitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Ki Jai Panchatattva Ki Jai mm. So here the Lord's talking about those who are very dear to Him. Those who sacrifice everything for the, for the service of the Lord become very dear. But Prabhupada qualifies that by saying everyone is very dear to the Lord, but some are more dear. Again, we can use the analogy of a family. In the family, there may be many children, but the father, or mother, in other words, the parents, they love their children equally. But we see maybe some children don't, don't obey the parents, and others strictly obey the parents. Some children show affection to their parents, others become a little bit distanced from their parents. Although the love is equal, still, how it's reciprocated is by how the children respond to the parents' affection. So in the same way, in life, and all devotees are dear to the Lord, in fact, all living entities are dear to the Lord, but Krishna says, Samoham Sabrabhuteshu, I envy no one. I'm equal to everyone. I'm not partial to anyone. But one who renders devotional service is a friend in me and I am a friend in him. So therefore we can see that according to how one accepts the instructions, guidance, and the affection of the Lord, the reciprocation is the same. Yeyatam mam prapadyante as they approach me, I reward them accordingly. So people are approaching the Lord in different ways, for different reasons. And then within the confines of devotional service, we have devotees who are practicing Krishna consciousness and all at the same time trying to achieve their material desires. And we have those who are still full of material desires but are trying to get rid of them. But then we have the devotees who are on the highest platform or purified from all material desires who have surrendered everything to the Lord and have no personal interest except the interest of the Lord. Those, so the Lord is dear to all, but you can imagine the reciprocation is different. And the reciprocation is based on how one approaches the Lord. So here, and Prabhupada makes this point, and with reference to one verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam in the ninth canto, this is in the past pastime of uh, Dravasa Muni, when Dravasa Muni offended Maharaj Ambarish, who was a pure devotee of the Lord. And then, of course, uh, he wanted to kill Maharaj Ambaris, but the Lord protected him and threw his Shudashan Chakra at Durvasa Muni. Durvasa Muni is a very powerful mystic, and he is an, he's an energy of Lord Shiva. So he ran from the chakra, but the chakra chased him throughout the universe. By his power, he was able to go to Shiva Loka, to Brahma Loka, but asking for shelter and protection nobody could give. Finally, he went to Vishnu, and he took shelter up there. 
and he wanted protection from Vishnu's chakra. Vishnu said, I have no power to withdraw my own chakra <laughs> because my devotees, they have me within their heart and therefore I am simply their puppet. Whatever the devotees do, I reciprocate. So the devotees are very dear to the Lord, especially the pure devotees. So the Lord was actually saying that I can't do anything because you offended my devotee. Only he can free you from the reactions of my chakra. And of course, you know, understanding the situation, Darasa went and apologized to Maharaj Ambarish, who in any way didn't feel any way offended by this, uh, this powerful mystic who was known for his anger. He gets anger, anger, angry very easy. <laughs> Sometimes we have devotees who are like that. <laughs> it's just their nature. <laughs> but still, we have to control that. Uh, but Devasa is known for becoming very uh, angry fast. And so, acting wrongly, now he was in trouble. But only when he was relieved from the uh, offense by Maharaj Amaris was he able to be freed from the Lord's chakra. So the Lord wanted to make a statement that, you know, this is how dear the devotees of the Lord are to me. I complete, I'm completely controlled by them. Why? Because the Lord is controlled by pure love. <laughs> Everyone has love for the Lord to some degree. But when that love is mixed with other objects of love, it doesn't control the Lord. To some degree... The Lord reciprocates that love, but only when the love is completely pure, completely repose on Krishna exclusively, then that love uh, captures the Lord completely. As as Prabhupada says, you have bhakti, you have bhaka, bhakta, and you have bhagavan. So bhakti is the process, bhakta is the devotee, and Bhagavan is the Lord. So what is the strongest of the three? Who knows? Who said? Bhakti. Bhakti is the strongest because Bhakti controls Bhagavan. And when the devotee has pure Bhakti, Anya, it's called Ananya Bhakti, unalloyed Bhakti, then the Lord is completely under the care of that devotee or under the control of that devotee because the devotee doesn't try to control the Lord, he tries to serve the Lord. But because he serves with love, that love controls the Lord. <laughs> Just like if somebody loves you, you know, you can feel that and you're so happy to do anything for that person because you can feel the love that that person has for you. So in the same way, the Lord is, that is the nature of the Lord. Um, therefore, we want to come to that stage of developing pure love for Krishna. That is our goal, ultimately. And how do we do that? Well, that's the process of bhakti. But in that process, we have to start to see it's not so important that what we get or who, what, what, what we are, what's important is what, is what I can do for the Lord or what I can do for the Lord's devotees. That becomes the most important thing and not so much what I'm getting or what I'm not getting like that. Because the Lord always takes care of his devotees like that. So uh, I was thinking when I was reading this verse, I was thinking of Bhakti Charu Maharaj. <laughs> How this verse really exemplifies his, his position in relationship to the Lord. Those who know him and have no doubt he has pure love for Krishna. It's, you can see it. It just comes out of his being. It's just like, it's there in, in everything he does. And so, yeah, so we, we are very much blessed with many, many devotees who are really very elevated in their Krishna consciousness. Therefore, in order to advance in our own Krishna consciousness, we should seek out the association of such persons and look for the opportunity to hear from them 
And if the opportunity is to serve them, then that, that, that makes that relationship wonderful. Okay, so we'll stop there. This is a very sweet purport, and Prabhupada is really getting right in. Out of affection, people ask the Lord for some material benefits, and the Lord will give sometimes, but sometimes he doesn't. But he does give himself to the pure devotees. Okay, any comments, questions? Hare Krishna, thank you for your nice lecture. Uh, twin lecture, I remember uh, my uh, childhood and compare, uh, like you said, uh, how uh, parents uh, allow equal, and, uh, but uh, seems uh, different. And I remember I have, uh, I have sister, and when uh, we were young, uh, my behavior to parents uh, was different. I was more smiley, I kissing them, I hugging them. Uh, she uh, couldn't do this. And uh, this seems uh, different, that they love me more. But it was not so. But it seems uh, that I always... Uh, Compare this. Uh, Who, who's older, you or your sister? Uh, five years older. You are? No, sister. Sister is older. Older, yes. And she was uh, very jealous on me and always think that uh, they love me more. But I, I do this uh, relationship. Mm. Now she knows. But <laughs> when uh, we were young, she was always jealous and angry mm. on me. But I couldn't help because I, my behavior is this. <laughs> and this uh, I always remember. Sometimes there's envy between siblings. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, but that's unfortunate. Well, the same opportunity was there for her. She could have took it, or, but for whatever reason, she didn't. <laughs> the parents are equal, but the parents will reciprocate. Accordingly, yeah. Yes, any other questions or comments? Is this somehow connected with karma? This uh, behavior of uh, parents and... Uh, it, it can be. Yeah. yeah. It can be connected with karma. Um, generally, when people are born in the same family, their karma is similar. There's differences always, but there's some similar karma. Um, how karma plays itself out is that at the time of birth, karma generally is what we say, there from the previous life. But then as we live in this life, we have different experiences. We develop different relationships. So then that karma sort of goes in an individual direction then. Like that. So as you grow up, you may have similar karma at the time of birth, but as you grow up, you may also go like this, you know, depending on how you live your life and who you associate with. Because mm -hmm. you're creating new karma. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Sundar Gopal. <laughs> so if we have, uh, according to my understanding, uh, uh, while we think that we are this body, we will also have material desires. If we don't have a realization that we are not this body, we 
it seems natural to have them. So what should be our, uh, uh, how should we act, like, uh, should we just uh, let them be and try to, while performing the ocean service, try not to, uh, try to perform it without motive and just let them there, or should we try to fulfill them if we have to also independently or, uh, if or try to fulfill them independently but at the same time know that Krishna is the, the giving the result or, try, or should we ask him not to ask what is our well material, material desires are something separate from Krishna so the idea is to mold our life around Krishna so even in the family there's family responsibilities. Well, you can take care of those responsibilities in order to keep the family, what we say, stable and whatever needs that are required. And that's not material desires, it's just necessities. But if you want to go out and enjoy in the town on Friday night, and don't tell your wife, that's a material desire. <laughs> So, you know, in other words, if anything you do separate, um, oh, Hare Krishna. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> in other words, anything we do in connection to Krishna, even if it's maintaining family or if you have your occupation, so, but you, you have to just check in and say, is this, is, this, is this spiritual or is this material what I'm doing? Like that, but the process is 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 meant to change our material desires into spiritual desires. That's the process. So that's a process. So as we chant, as we associate, as we understand philosophy clearer and better, and learn how to apply the philosophy, and then we're making progress, and our material desires are going becoming less. The strength is going down. We can see that. What we desired maybe a couple of years ago are not as strong as what we are now. You stay in Krishna consciousness, your material desires will become less. But the thing is that we do we don't really know how many material desires we do have. <laughs> They're really many of them are so deep we can't even see them. But if you stay in the process and you pray, my dear Lord, uh, please guide me to do those things that are meant for my advancement towards you in, in devotional service and guide me away from those things that I might want to do which are not beneficial for my spiritual life. So this is a nice prayer. It's praying to bring on the positive. It's praying to get rid of the negative. But if we stay in the process and follow it gradually, but you can see, you, you see when something comes up, you can see, oh, oh, what you, I mean, if you liked, if you like to eat chocolate, okay, so that might not be so bad. <laughs> but is it necessary or not necessary? Obviously, it's not necessary, but you have a, a certain taste for a certain type of food, and you have to have it sometimes, and you don't feel happy unless you get it. <laughs> so that may, that's it's not. It's kind of like trying to enjoy something that really you don't really need. I mean, what do you do with that? You offer it to Krishna, but at the same time, you think I'm just doing it because I want I want to keep connected with Krishna, but really it's just all about me. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we have to take some inventory and see what, what's there in our life that we don't need. Try to avoid it. And Krishna will always give you what you need. He doesn't give you what you want, but he gives you what you need. <laughs> Uh, 
And we have to accept that, that he knows better what's better for us. <laughs> Like today, I don't know if I should say this. Should I say it? Okay. I was thinking, uh, I don't want lunch. I don't want to eat lunch today. And then about 3 o'clock, 3.30, Krishna said, Sarira avidya jan jatendriyanta he kaha jive fele visaya sagare I heard the, you know, the mantra. So I understood it's time for prasad. So I thought, all right, I'll just cook some pasta. Because I have my little kitchen and I had my pots and pans and some pasta. So I'm just going to cook some. Then I thought, why cook pasta? I'll just call Dharma, you know, Bhakta, Bhakta Vatsal and he'll bring some prasadam. So why go through this whole cooking process? So I called Bhakta Vatsal and guess what? No answer. <laughs> <laughs> so then I was back to the pasta and I thought, <laughs> I thought, all right, this is what Krishna wants. He doesn't want me to bother Bhakta Vatsal. <laughs> So I cooked pasta and some, some, something else too, one little thing. And after I finished, I was happy. And I was so glad I didn't have to bother Bhakta Vatsa. <laughs> so my, my desire was to, I was thinking, you know, why go through the whole cooking and cleaning process? Just, you know, put, put my order in. But Krishna said to Bhakta Vatsa, don't answer the phone. <laughs> So he didn't. <laughs> so you know, you see, we can see how how life works. It always doesn't work according to how you plan it. <laughs> you have to. You, you should never push your own ideas. If you want something, you can try for it. But if you see Krishna's showing you in one way or other, this is not the way to go, and you just, you know. Pray to him and find out what way he wants you to go. <laughs> That's a... <laughs> well, that's a nice purport. <laughs> she said she Krishna wanted me to experience Italian food because I'm Italian. <laughs> Roots. I wasn't eating any roots, it was pasta. <laughs> so that was a little different. <laughs> I guess I had a secret desire to have pasta. <laughs> and I wasn't aware of it. <laughs> so, you know, this is just an example of how we plan things, but Krishna somehow or other arranges things differently. If you're sincere in your Krishna consciousness, Krishna will always do the, will do the, even if you make a mistake, he'll guide you to the right thing. He's always with you. He's always with you. Mm -hmm. We just have to be sincere that I don't, I don't really want these material desires. And he'll help you get rid of them. When he help, when if you want to get rid of him, he helps you. If you want to hold on to him, he also helps you. But if you really want to hold on to him, then he lets you keep him. <laughs> At first, he lets you. He'll he'll say no, and it makes it difficult for you. Then you say ah, and then you keep wanting it, and then he says, "You're on your own." <laughs> it happens all the time. He won't. He'll. He'll. He'll help you, up to the point where he sees that you're not going to change, and then he'll. He'll let you go on your own. Then you have to suffer. <laughs> so we always have to be open to what Krishna wants, and not so much what we want. <laughs> but. 
The Shastras say you can't fulfill material desires. When you try to fulfill a material desire, you create another material desire. Each time you fulfill a material desire, it gets stronger. Each time you refuse to fulfill it, it gets weaker. So the more you, yeah, the more you say no, the more the less that material desire has strength on you. At first, it may be a little strong. It's, the example is like a lion. The lion is in the cage. You don't feed her for one day, it becomes really, you know, starts growling. You don't feed her for another day, it starts roaring. And if you don't feed her from a third day, and then it's so weak, it's like a big pussy cat, you know. Hare Krishna. <laughs> so thank you for coming and reminding me of what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> no, you did good. You added some uh, spice to the class. <laughs> yeah, so this is how we think. We're not so interested in fulfilling material desires. We're trying to satisfy Krishna and at the same time do what is best in our own devotional service. So we shouldn't be so attached to what we want. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Any other? Does that help? Yeah. Anything else? Okay, we're getting close to time. So thank you very much. There's another question somewhere? No? Okay. Srimad Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Bhakti Chumaraj Ki Jai.